experiment time. Today we're going to see what effect fermentation has on open crumb. Is this the holy grail of open crumb? Hi, I'm Soon and I'm a food geek. Today we're going to see if fermentation is a factor when trying to get open crumb in your sourdough bread. I've already shown in a previous experiment that the sweet spot for proper fermentation lies between 25 to 50 percent growth. So for this experiment I will be fermenting 10 percent, 25 percent, 50 percent and 75 percent and we will see if there's a big difference in the open crumb formation in the bread. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. If you want to see more of this content, please join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The formula that I'll be using in this experiment is 100% bread flour to maximize the potential of having open crumb. The hydration is 80%, which is the one I use for all my experiments, unless they're hydration related, of course. The salt content is 2% and the inoculation is 20%. Inoculation is the amount of starter in the dough in baker's percentage. The size of each loaf is 700 grams, which gives a nice manageable size. Anything else in the methods is kept as is when compared to my master recipe. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a member at Patreon. You can also buy some merch or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those were the words. This is the experiment. This is not a recipe, it's an experiment. If you'd like to bake these breads, I have the entire process described in my master recipe linked in the description. First, I mixed everything together for the dough. As this is a fermentation experiment and everything in the ingredients are the same, I'll be doing everything up to the fermentation in one batch. After I mixed the ingredients, I let the dough rest for an hour to let the gluten develop. Then I did the first set of stretch and folds. Then the second set of stretch and folds. and the third set of stretch and folds. Then I checked the gluten development using the window pane test and it looked great. Then I divided the dough into separate bulking containers as they wouldn't be done at the same time.
I leveled the top of each dough to be able to accurately monitor the growth. And then I put the dough away until they fermented. My kitchen was so warm that I dropped the proofer. After about two and a half hours of fermentation, the 10% was done. So I pre-shaped it. And I final shaped it, but unfortunately it didn't get recorded due to a camera malfunction. After it was shaped, it went straight into the fridge to stop fermentation. After about 30 minutes after the 10% was done, the 25% was ready. So I pre-shaped it. Let it rest for 15 minutes and I final shaped it. Then I moved it to the fridge. About 30 minutes after the 25% was done, the 50% was ready. So I pre-shaped it. I let it rest for 15 minutes and then I final shaped it. and to the fridge it went. Then the last one finished fermentation about 30 minutes after the 50% was ready. So I pre-shaped it. I let it rest for 15 minutes and then I final shaped it. then I put it into the fridge. The next morning, it was time to bake, so I heated my oven for an hour. I grabbed the 10% first. Scored it. Baked it. Revealed it. And took it out of the oven. All the other breads were baked the exact same way. So now it's time to have a look at the crumb. But first, in my last open crumb video, people asked me about the fermentation bubbles. So I recorded them up close so we can see how fermentation affects the bubbles. 10%.
Looks all right, but not so many on the sides. 25%. Okay, this is looking pretty awesome. It's so crispy. 50%. The bubbles are huge and super crispy here. Looking awesome too. 75%. So this is looking a bit like the 10%. Some bubbles, but not nearly as many as the 25 and 50%. Okay, back to the crumb. 10%. Oh, nice. Twenty five per cent. Not bad, not bad at all. Fifty per cent. A bit on the tighter side. 75%. Okay, this is a pretty tight crumb. Let's see them all together. 75%. As last time, I wanted to show you a bit more of the crumb, since just looking at the middle might be a bit one-sided. Well, two-sided, but uh, who's counting? 10%. Well, this is a super open crumb. Looks gorgeous to me. 25%. Also very open. Looks great. 50%. This looked more tight in the cross section, so let's have a look. Well, this tells a different story. It's a very open crumb. 75%. This crumb is much more closed. So I also smelled each bread and tasted them off camera. There were no discernible difference in either smell or taste. So I was a bit surprised that the dough that only fermented to 10% still seemed perfectly viable. I'd have thought it would have shown signs of under fermentation, but it didn't. As for open crumb, the 10%, the 25% and the 50% were quite comparable and had a nice open crumb. With the 75% it was different, while the bread itself didn't seem over fermented, it had much more even and closed crumb. So it seems like the takeaway is that if you desire open crumb that you need to ferment on the shorter side. That also seems to maximize oven spring, so it's a win-win. If you love this shirt as much as I do, there's a link for it in the description. It's made by Challenger Breadware. They love gluten too. <laughs> I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Thank you.